I'll get to the point right away. I'm retiring for good. I know the process uh, was a pretty big deal last time, so when I woke up this morning, I figured I'd just press record and let you guys know first. So I uh, won't be long-winded. You only get one super emotional retirement essay, and I used mine up last year. So I uh, really thank you guys so much to every single one of you for supporting me, my family, my friends, my teammates, my competitors. Uh, I could go on forever, there's too many. Um, thank you guys for allowing me to live my absolute dream. I wouldn't change a thing. Love you all. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. a Thursday at the happy hour but of course it's five o'clock somewhere Tom Brady drinks free at our bar and I think pretty much any bar he walks into I don't remember the last time Tom Brady probably had to pay for a drink uh, welcome in to the fantasy football happy hour I'm Matthew Berry Jay Croucher Lawrence Jackson here and the goat the goat of goats Tom Brady number 12 hanging it up uh, a man who is probably most known for saying he would beat me in a 40-yard dash. Yeah, I believe that's... <laughs> like when you look at all the accomplishments of, you know, that's probably well, what he comes he ain't first. accomplished that yet. He has, he's still got to do it. He's still, still got to do, do that. It. Long list of everything to do. So, um, emotional goodbye. Lots to get to. Actually, kind of, it's the Thursday before Super Bowl week. And the three of us will all be in Arizona next week. So, we will be broadcasting yes, live sir. Monday through Friday live here on Peacock, obviously, at noon Eastern every single day from Radio Row, and uh, obviously available on demand wherever you get your podcasts, the NFL and NBC YouTube channel uh, as well. Can't wait because there's always like a lot of great guests. We'll have to uh, talk to them. But before we get to all the news of the day, and there's been a lot of coaching changes as well, I think we got to start with TB12. Indeed. Sure. And firstly, Lawrence Jackson actually posted a retirement video on the same day as Tom Brady, but no one saw it. <laughs> no one saw it. And so now he's just still here. Right? He's just come back in for yeah, work. You, you, yeah. The, la the last thing you want to do is retire the same day as Tom Brady. In fact, I think this will keep Aaron Rodgers wow. from retiring. Because I, I saw a tweet like he ain't going to retire because then they'll go into Hall of Fame the same, the same year. year. And then and he he's got to play. That. He doesn't want to play second fiddle no, to no, uh, no. Tom Brady. Can't do that. So Aaron Rodgers is absolutely playing another year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Like even if he quits after one season, after yeah, one game. Yeah, yeah right. You yeah. know. Um, we'll get to fantasy implications of Brady uh, retiring. But one of the biggest ones is that Aaron Rodgers is going to help a team. I think right. in the fact that he's sticking around. But yeah. in terms of best memories. And by the way, just not to derail uh, this, but I don't know if you saw this, but he might have been screwing around. But Devontae Adams last night was doing yeah. like a Q&A on Twitter with people and somebody tweeted at him yeah. uh, what neighborhood does uh, Nate, Aaron Rodgers move yeah. to and Devontae Adams quote tweeted and said mine. Like mine. Yeah. I think athletes are getting better at just kind of poking fun at the power yes. that they can wield like the Arian Foster thing with the NFL being rigged yeah. and right. all of that like yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a bit the, the Harry and Foster <laughs> <laughs> accusing the NFL people, being right. People going this. for it, though. Oh they, like, God. really going for that, though. <laughs> I mean, we, we live in an era where anything put on on social media, somebody believes it, you know. Yeah. Somebody's crazy uncle on Facebook, uh, it, you know, is now, you know, posting it and uh, sending it around to everyone. So, and by the way, just because Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams might be neighbors doesn't mean they play <laughs> for the same team. But I thought that was interesting. But let's focus this on TB12. I 100% agree with you and Lawrence that obviously this means Rodgers is coming back. He is not going to want to go into the Hall of Fame yeah. the same year as Tom Brady. But let's take a moment here and just, we didn't really get a chance to, to you know, this is our first show since uh, he announced his retirement. So I'll just kind of go around the horn and just, yeah. you know, give, you know, some thoughts on Tom Brady Lawrence I mean look man whether you love them or you hate him you will miss him in the game like he it, he was the NFL you know so um you know immediately when he uh made his little retirement video I appreciated the fact that he was just like look man I'm gonna just get this out of the way I did the long thing last right. year you know let me just get to it let the Buccaneers get to figuring out what they have to do and for me I immediately thought of my best Tom Brady memory Okay. Which for me, you know, a, a, a kid coming from Georgia is obviously Super Bowl 51. Yeah. <laughs> Super Bowl 51. I have come to appreciate that moment. Like, 
I don't lose sleep over that. It's over just twenty eight like, three. You don't. Nah, this nah, is the nah. greatness of Brady. It, that's you. Just got to chalk it up to that. Like if if the quarterback on the other side is Tom Brady, then twenty eight to three. Like you you not safe. Or if you Trevor Lawrence, you know one of those right. two guys can come 27 back. Twenty seven nothing. So yeah, I just right. you know uh, I, I started just thinking about one of if it's not my best Tom, my favorite Tom Brady moment. It's the most memorable one for me. Sure. I, <laughs> I was at that. I was actually at that Super Bowl. I mean, it was like, one of the things. It just it felt like in that Super Bowl, it just felt like the first half, like everyone, we were, my wife and I were there, were two friends that are diehard Patriots fans. Yeah. And they were like, you know, like they'd seen a ghost the first half. They're just like, yeah. you Through know, a pick but then, six and but, then, but once it started happening, especially after the Edelman catch, it was just like, this is happening. Like it just, now it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Right, and they didn't lead till overtime. No one, you know, no one. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Everyone, twenty-eight three is what everyone talks about, but no one remembers the fact that they literally did not lead in that game until they took the lead in overtime to, t- to win the game. I think, to me, what I remember most about Brady is just that sense of inevitability when he was driving down to take the lead or to tie the game, and just like the fatalism that the other yeah. team would feel that it just wasn't going to happen. Like, think about that game against Atlanta, where people don't remember this, but like I think Goskowski missed an extra point when it was twenty-eight three to go up twenty-eight nine. I remember. And so, he had to, Brady had to convert two two-point conversions. And when he's doing that at the end of yeah. the game, it's like, this is a 100% chance that he's yes. going to convert this. And then there's a 100% chance that he's going to drive down the field in overtime. But I think his greatest masterpiece wasn't even that. I think it was the Seattle Super Bowl, where he scores the two touchdowns, the two drives in the fourth quarter after the, uh, the Legion of Boom kind of rattles him early on and to bounce back and win that game. Everyone remembers Malcolm Butler, but Brady was majestic in that fourth quarter. He 100% was. I mean, it, you know... I've seen Brady win a number of his Super Bowls, not all of them, but a number of them. You know, I mean, I I got to go to the Super Bowl for basically the last 10 to 12 years that I was at ESPN. So Mm -hmm. obviously a lot of those covered Brady Super Bowls. So, but I think the thing that I, you know, I mean, there's so many things that sort of come to mind when you think about Brady, but whatever, I'm a fantasy guy, right? And so I think about, I think about 2007, right? I mean, like that, the the, the 50 (laughs) touchdown year, like I had him on a team. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and it was just one of those things where you talk about the inevitability. Like, it didn't matter who else you started. Like, I got Tom, you know, and he was just, he just went absolutely crazy that 2007 year. By the way, 2021, also one of the uh, one of the great fantasy seasons, one of the top 17 best single season fantasy point totals by a quarterback in NFL history. You see it there. Here's just some of the, some of the games. You remember, you think about, you know, that, that crazy game against the Titans in 2009. Obviously, the Dolphins game in 07 was the um, uh, was was during that crazy run. And look at all the like. Look at them Bucks games. Look at them right. Bucks oh, games. Shows what the league has become now. <laughs> you know, my my uh, my friend and former colleague Field Yates had a great tweet about Brady, just saying like broke down his stats by decade, and just like yeah, his yeah. stats as a 20 year old, Hall of Fame worthy. His yeah, stats yeah, as a 30 year old, Hall of Fame worthy. His stats as a 40-year-old Hall of Fame Hall of Fame warrior. Like if you only play, if you only could have took his stats from 40 to 45, yeah. you know yeah. he he. Um, There's just multiple Super Bowls in each decade too. Seven Super Bowl wins, five Super Bowl MVPs. He's the number. He's the NFL leading scorer in uh, the NFL leader, I should say, in passing touchdowns, passing yards, uh, completions, attempts, game-winning drives, fourth-quarter comebacks, quarterback starts, quarterback wins. Touchdown yards and wins in the playoffs. And, of course, no player in NFL history has scored more fantasy points than Thomas Brady, number 12. Goat of goats. Yes. Also the the betting goat as well. No one uh, has covered the spread more than Tom Brady. He covered in 58% of his game. So if you just bet on Tom Brady every single game, you would have won money, which is no surprise. And there is, there's no more terrifying feeling the past two decades in the NFL than betting against Tom Brady in a big right. game. And I'll never forget uh, the second Giants Super Bowl where I was on the Giants money line and there was just this sense that this guy just won't die. He right. just will not die. And when they're going down the field uh, at the end and Gronk just barely doesn't get the, the Hail Mary in the end zone, Brady on that drive 
he had like a fourth and 20 that he converted and it's right. just like this guy just won't go down no. it's just unbelievable yeah, yeah. and uh, I think that'll be his legacy the, this feeling that there was just yeah, there was some higher power that was just propelling him the, the inevitability is, is just a great uh, phrase. I agree. That just like it's you know the, the the all the cliches. Did they leave too much time for Tom Brady? Always and the answer do. is yes. It doesn't do. matter how much time <laughs> they left for Tom Brady. If they left any amount of time for Tom Brady, it was too much. Yeah. Um, and you just you just knew it was over. Even this past year, even this past year, the 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 primetime game against the Saints, right? The the yeah. uh, you know yeah. like yeah. right yeah. like you were like. That was a game where neither offense was running. Like the, you know, Tom was the offensive line was so beat up. Tom's just getting hit left and right. He's got no receivers out there that are helping him out at all. And yet, still, at the end of it, whatever it was, like sixteen nine or whatever, you knew like this. I, I forget what the exact score was, but like they get, he had like two and a half minutes left in a game in which they hadn't moved the ball at all the entire game. And you're like. Well, yep. oh, well, two and a half minutes, that's like a quarter for it's, Tom Brady. Like, you got time. And now I'm even thinking about Jacksonville a couple of years back, the AFC Championship. Like, they had them dead to rights, too, with Blake Bortles. But, you know. <laughs> right. I should have lost that game. That was a weird fumble. <laughs> but it's like it's so pump, many yeah. games he should have lost, but it's like he did it. And yeah. it's, it's – He's had a lot of good teams and good defenses, obviously Bill Belichick, but it's never a coincidence when a guy go to 10 Super Bowls and you the quarterback on all of those well, teams. And by the way, I think that's a great point here. And I think that the the fascinating thing is that for so long, the critics of Brady and, the, you know, the, the more he played, yeah, yeah. you know, they got less and less and less. But the critics of Brady would say system quarterback benefited from Belichick benefited from yeah. the great from the greatest coach you know whatever deflate gate and blah 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 yeah. blah 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 like those are the things they'll say so okay fine like but then he goes to Tampa Bay as a 40 year old like at, year. at 43 years old and t takes a seven to nine team the year before to the Super Bowl and wins the following year like to me like any question you had and I didn't have any questions, but there are there are naysayers out there. I used There's to some ask haters. some questions like 2010, 11, but that was who a lot of people did. Right. But it's like, you like come I said, around. yeah, it, it's like it ain't no coincidence. You just winning seven Super Bowls, like that's nuts. Yeah, I think with Brady, I mean, the thing that I'll remember about him from a player perspective as well. One, just always standing so tall in the pocket, just being so courageous as well, just taking hits. You know, the, the broadcasters always talk about how you have to stand tall in the pocket, have to wear the hit because it'll allow the receiver to get open. I'll never forget AFC title game in Denver against the Broncos, the year the Broncos won the Super Bowl, where Brady is just under absolute siege from what DeMarcus Ware and Von Miller, yep, and he's yep. just getting sacked and sacked and sacked. And he's just taking the hits, and then he can converts the fourth and ten to Gronk down the field and they lose by two in the end but he just he just wouldn't never die and uh no and, and by the way I mean we talked about this this year like like his longevity is, you know we we make fun of like the kale salads and you know whatever the the the, the avocado broccoli, ice cream the avocado <laughs> ice cream and the broccoli milkshakes and everything like that but the fact <laughs> of the matter is no look this year what was the number 67 different quarterbacks started a game in the NFL this year, 67 different quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, we just saw it with San Francisco. San yeah, Francisco yeah, was down to their yeah. fourth string. They had to play their emergency quarterback, like yeah. their fifth string quarterback in, a, in an NFC title game. And yet at age 45, Tom Brady played every game. One major injury. In One his major injury in a, you know, in a career that, you know, spanned multiple decades. Um, you know, that was That's three, wild. Right? Even with the new protection of the quarterbacks, it – that's like, man, that, that man is just blessed. <laughs> Lawrence, 67 <laughs> quarterbacks started a game this year, and it wasn't all because of ineffective play. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, again, I mean, you know, just I mean, whatever. Just think about, the, think about the last two games we saw. Okay, Joe Burrow played every game. But we saw some Chad Henney this year, yep. you know, yeah. against the Jaguars. Yep. The, you know, obviously Gardner Minshew started a couple games for the Eagles. Yep. And then, you know, the, the Niners, of course, from Trey Lance to Garoppolo to Brock Purdy to Josh Johnson to Chris McCaffrey running the Wildcat. I mean, that so, counts. Right. I just <laughs> anyway. So his just longevity is incredible. I I will tell you guys that. So you guys know that I, I have a I, I uh, you know, full disclosure, like I do. A, I have a deal with Autograph, which is Tom Brady's NFT company. And so I'm part of Tom's NFT. And so the reason I bring this up is that there's an end-of-the-year party 
Um, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on air, whatever. But I, this, I, uh, anyway, I'm going to have an opportunity at some point in the future. I'll just say this. Here's what I'll say. That thanks to Autograph, I will have the opportunity at some point in the, in the near future uh, to interview Tom Brady. Right. I'm going to have that. In, I'm going to have the opportunity to do that. And I, I don't know how much time I'm going to get, but I'm just like, what do I ask the guy? And by what do I ask the guy? I mean, like, I need like four hours. You know what I mean? Yeah, There's so yeah. many things. Like, and I'm just like, I've just been thinking about, I want to ask that. Well, well that, that might take, you know, like. You got to make it count. I got to make it count because I don't know how much time I'm getting with him. But, um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. Uh, so, anyway, the, the fact of the matter is, is that, um, you know, he is truly the go to the goats. I thought the J.J. Watt tweet was accurate. Like, you know, no debate. No discourse like he is. No discussion. Yeah, it wasn't a debate a couple of years, a few, several years back, you know. But now that he's, you know, retired, I feel, I mean, maybe he just felt like to put that stamp on it and be like, hey, look, this is what it is. So, but yeah, it, it's been years since. It just know. doesn't feel like, you know, you, you have, you know, Michael versus LeBron and, and, um, in the NBA. And there's, you know, there's other sports where you can do that for where you could say, was it this, you know, I, you know, um, it doesn't feel like. I mean, I know you could talk Manning, you can talk Rodgers. I can, mean, if you're you know, like, talking quarterbacks and the greatest and most accomplished, no, I don't think you could. I think you can argue that like Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes, they might be better quarterbacks than Tom Brady in terms of the ceiling of their talent. But definitely. in terms of career, no, there's no, no one holds a candle yeah, nah. to oh, Brady. This, uh, the, the amount of clutch throws yep. Tom Brady has made, you know, the accuracy just. Anyway, it's yeah. unbelievable. Let's, uh, well, let's talk about on. some of the fantasy implications yes, sir. Uh, in terms of players who are dependent on a quarterback like Tom Brady. I mean, Tampa Bay, uh, their pass catcher production this season. I mean, you see the big names at the top of your screen. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Evans, who kind of salvaged this season late, particularly with that monster game against Carolina, but yeah. wasn't really himself. Godwin was rock solid despite missing time uh, yeah. coming off the ACL at the start of the season. But, I mean, it's still it's an impressive lineup, but uh, it's not quite as impressive if, uh, if Tom Brady's not throwing another ball. To me, I, to me, Evans and Godwin will be fine. They were fantasy superstars with Jameis Winston, uh, yeah. even with, you know, even Fitz Magic. Like, I mean, Mike Evans has had 1,000 receiving yards in every single season he's played in the NFL. Right. Which is nine, okay? I mean, Godwin... Godwin is somebody who emerged prior to Tom Brady right. coming there. So, obviously, it depends on who they get. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind a reunion with Jameis Winston. We'll see. You know, right now, Kyle yeah. Trask is the only quarterback currently on the roster Ooh, for the deal. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, we'll see if they decide to do, like, kind of a full rebuild. And if it was Trask, then you might feel a little bit worse about it. But to me, the one that got the uh, – so, I feel like, ultimately, Evans and Godwin will be fine. I don't think Gage or Julio or any of the complimentary other wide receivers there are anything interesting. To me, the person who loses the most fantasy value without Tom Brady there is Leonard Fournette. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, the, the fact is, is that Leonard Fournette was somebody who the Jacksonville Jaguars declined to pick up his fifth-year option and ultimately waived him. You know, they were like – and his – I think if Brady doesn't resuscitate his career, very different outcome for Leonard Fournette in terms of – how long he's in the NFL or what his career is. But uh, Brady trusted him in pass pro. Brady loves to dump off to the running back. What made Fournette's fantasy career last year especially, and somewhat this year, but definitely like last yeah, he, year, yeah. was all the receptions. Yeah. Because Brady just trusted him in, in the backfield and sort of kept dumping off to him. And, and so we don't know whoever – whatever quarterback is back there isn't going to want uh, Fournette – back there as much as Brady did. And we already saw Rashad White eat into his workload towards the end of last season. And he'll be, season. Rashad White will be there. He'll yes, be correct. there. Um, He's on a rookie deal. Yep. To say ab about Leonard Fournette, too, he wasn't known as being a pass catcher out of the backfield in Jacksonville. Like, he got with Tom Brady, and he unlocked a whole new, you know, piece of his skill set. And we've seen this with Tom Brady from the beginning of him playing with the Patriots. James White, uh, Kevin Falk. Whoever he had at the running back, yeah. there was all Danny Woodhead. He's always had that guy to come in and, you know, we could start him in the flex. Like, there's weeks where we started Woodhead. Yeah, right. Definitely James the, White. Who is you know Tom Brady's that? PPR running back this week? I need right. nine points. Right. And, and, boom, and, and you, you know it. whoever it right. is, like, you're going to get that nine points right, right there. So, the, that, that'll that be the biggest, 
you know, change uh, like you said. Yeah, I mean, Leonard Fournette looked like he was on the trajectory of like late career Le'Veon Bell, uh, late career Todd Gurley, those type of guys. And then all of a sudden he goes from, he turns into playoff Lenny after being 3.6 yeah. yards per carry Lenny. And uh, yeah, I think he's definitely going to be the one who suffers the most. Let's talk about the NFC South, which is a uh, complete disaster. Really. Loaded with quarterbacks. Yeah, we look at the depth charts. At the quarterback position in the Ooh. NFC South. Desmond Ritter and Marcus Mariota in Atlanta. Uh, the aforementioned great Kyle Trask in Tampa Bay. Frank Reich is inheriting uh, Matt Corral and Jacob Eason. And then the New Orleans Saints, Jameis Winston and uh, Jake Luton. <coughs> uh, so, yeah, just a, a murderer's row of great quarterbacks in the division. In terms of who's even the favorite in this division, I would say New Orleans, just because Jameis Winston is the best quarterback currently on yeah. the roster, and I think they've also got the best defense. Yeah, right. And with that offense, I mean, I, I don't think you can I, count on Michael Thomas, and we're going to have lots of discussions in the preseason yeah, next but, year about Michael Thomas, but Chris Olave um, still there. gives them an elite option. Yeah, and we saw some, you know, and Alvin Kamara, like he's got a legal situation that he has to deal with, and we'll see how that yeah. plays out. But we saw some nice moments from uh, Juwan Johnson and Rashid Shaheed, and like they, they had a couple pieces. I agree with you. They, they have the best defense there. I mean, I'll say this. Carolina played tough under Steve Wilkes down the stretch, and we'll see – be interesting to see what that Carolina uh, defense looks like this upcoming year and what Frank Reich does. Uh, you know, if I'm Frank Reich, I'm going to try to keep Steve Wilkes. You know, see if yeah. you can talk him into uh, talk him into. <laughs> That's going to be tough. I know what like he, going on there. He said something on social media too, like I'm disappointed, but I ain't going to quit. You know how? It yeah. Goes. You know that'll be like he like Atlanta trying to get him right. Yeah. And so you know how. Players do it. Coaches do it, too, out of spite. Just go right there in the division. Although Steve yeah. Brooks better know who he got on that defense in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, well, it's – look, at the end of the day, like, you know, the, the Carolina Panthers owner, want, David Tepper, wants to win. Like, you know, there's, there's ways to solve, you know, uh, pride issues. That, but, oh, that's a fact, and it's, yeah, and it's something that's green. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if he pays up or whatever, but, you know, so we'll see how all that happens. I don't think it'll be tough for the Saints to get Andy Dalton back if that's the way they want to go. Sure. Oh, I think no, there's going to be a lot of quarterback <laughs> shuffling. It's going to be a fascinating offseason. Talk about all the, uh, all the quarterbacks here, but I would agree with you that if I had to place a bet today, the Saints would be the where I would bet, but you know what I'm going to do? You know, Not right. place a bet yeah. today. Yeah. Wait it out. Yeah, wait yeah, wait it out. I don't think you'll time. get good enough. I don't think you're – I mean, you tell me, but I don't feel like you get good enough future odds right now that it would be worth it because there, there's – There's too much uncertainty. Too much yeah. uncertainty. All right, we're going to go to break. When we come back, the coaching carousel continues. We'll talk Sean Payton. Yeah, and Kellen Moore has a new home. You don't want to miss the Traitors. 20 fierce competitors gather at a Scottish castle in the hopes of winning up to $250,000. The catch, three of them are aiming to steal the prize for themselves. They the all, the you can tell, look, at, look at that picture. They're all like, hey, look like a traitor. You can tell the photographer yeah. was like, give me your best traitor look. And if you are watching on Peacock, that's Matthew Berry on the left of your screen. Uh, very much <laughs> yeah. in his Scottish traitor mode. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the coaching carousel. The I will say news. I feel like I should have been asked to be on that uh, show. That's all right. It's your first year at NBC. And next year, year, year next two year. is when you start next getting year. the offers. Next year, I want I want to be on all the reality shows. <laughs> yeah. I want to be on The Traitors. I want to be on Love Island. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> Matthew Barry on Love Island. Can you imagine? That's here's me terrifying. On, but that would be great. Here's me on Love Island. Here's like, oh, yeah. You know, and oh, here's my wife. These are my kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, like, and just like, like yeah, who, got, who got right. this guy? Right, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, oh, some some 23-year-old going like, what am I doing here? This is the worst thing ever. Unbelievable. God. We do need to right. get you, though, on yeah. the traders. Uh, Broncos acquire Coach Sean Payton, Matthew. Yeah. Uh, they give up a fair bit, first and second round pick. Now, I'm not sure if I was Sean Payton. would have been my first choice to go into the division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. At the same time, there's a lot of talent on the Broncos team. And I think Russell, I'm buying Russell Wilson's stock. I think he showed something towards the end of the season. And, uh, yeah, I think the Broncos, I think they'll be an above 500 team next year. I buy all those things. And the other thing is, is, like, figure out where, where else is Sean Payton going? Yeah. Like, I mean, because, I, like, I hear what you're saying. I, you know, wow, you, do you really want to go compete against the Chiefs and, and, and the Chargers for the next decade? But where, when you think about the available jobs, right, you need a quarterback. So here's what Sean Payton has in Denver when he goes there, right? So he's sitting here looking. First off, 
he has owners that are willing to spend money. I mean, you know, it, it is the it is the Walmart heirs. They they put a hundred thousand dollars into you know a new uh, to resod the entire stadium with one week left in the stadium, just one week left in the season because they felt like it wasn't up to snuff, even though you know they they could have gotten away with it. Like so, they he has an ownership group that wants to win and is willing to clearly spend money. That's a positive, right? It's a good defense, so he's got a good defense. That's a positive. He's got playmakers on the offense. So you assume Javante Williams comes back healthy. You've yeah. got Jerry Judy. You've got Cortland Sutton. You've got um, Dulcich, Greg Dulcich and uh, Albert Quibanam, right? I mean, you've got some playmakers on offense. And in theory, you have a quarterback. Yes, Russell Wilson had a brutal year last year. But um, that's the big thing. You know, and Sean Payton's forgotten more about football than I'll ever know. And my, I'm assuming that he looked at the tape and saw some of the same things that we're talking about where you saw flashes of it. Yeah. You didn't see – he wasn't, you know, prime Super Bowl winning Russell Wilson, He's, but he was – He didn't have the inevitability that Tom Brady no, had and that not, Russell Wilson had for a time. But, right, correct. But he, he had some, like, usable. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think you could look at that and say, like, hey, with the, with the right coaching and the right atmosphere uh, – we can we can get we can get we can win with Russell Wilson. Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, obviously going from Nathaniel Hackett to Sean Payton is just a little bit of an upgrade, right? This is what you know. I would say to fans like you said they'll be an above 500 team. I agree, right? But just when when they got Russell Wilson, right? We felt like this team could be competing for the AFC, right? I just want we we should all temper the expectations, like they'll be battling for second in that division with the Chargers. Like, they'll be a much better team. They'll be more competitive in, in, all, in, in, in all of those things. But record-wise and playoff record-wise and losing season records-wise, he's not far off of Mike McCarthy, right? He's not that far off of Mike McCarthy. Both got one Super Bowl win, uh, playoff appearances, 11 <laughs> for McCarthy. It is, it's great. Nine for Sean Payton. So is it like it's good. Right. I don't it's not just some slam dunk like, hey, we going straight to the divisional round championship. I'm sorry to compare him to Mike McCarthy, but them no, numbers listen. is them numbers. No, listen. I think what's great, Lawrence, is you you <laughs> have decided to go out in a blaze of glory. This is Lawrence's last appearance. <laughs> the retirement video is gonna get Fantasy uploaded. football happy hour. So it's been a good run for you. <laughs> it's been a really good run. We appreciate all your contributions, and we wish you well in the future. Wow. Mike Lawrence. McCar Love Island, Mike right, McCarthy. Right, right. exactly. Unbelievable. Exactly. Right. Well, um, let's... No, but, but honestly, seriously, like the fact of the matter is, is that I hear you on the fact, yes, he only has one Super Bowl, but certainly much more competitive than Mike McCarthy uh, in, the, um, in Sean Payton's career coaching the Saints, right? He had, you know, he coached for 15 years. Breeze was the starting quarterback for 14 of them, but... His offense led the NFL in yards six different times. They were top 10 in 13 of the 15 season. They top three in points six different times. He was top 10 in points 12 of 15 seasons. McCarthy does not have that kind of resume in terms of generating an offense, right? He does. He doesn't. I mean, you know, so you can sit there and say, ultimately, when it comes down to wins and losses, that yeah, I guess they, you know, the goal is ultimately a Super Bowl. Yeah. I don't have an argument for bit. the fact they only each <laughs> each of them only have a have one. Um, won Super Bowl, but I just felt like maybe this is unfair to McCarthy, but I always felt like his Packers teams and clearly his Cowboys teams have always underperformed, and I've never felt that with Sean Payton. I think Sean Payton had basically one guy. I think had, the difference he had Drew Brees and Michael Thomas. With Payton, you could see this game every single play. You could see this game that what was going on with Green Bay and Mike McCarthy. You could see Aaron Rodgers in a Superman cape. That's all yes. I could say. I didn't see yeah. the scheme yeah. with Aaron yeah. Rodgers ever. It was just Aaron Rodgers doing go, hey, Aaron cool Rodgers, go, go bail us out. Yeah, exactly. Go make something let's, happen. Uh, so, let's stay in the division that at I was any rate, about the Chargers. I just don't know that – pretend Sean Payton gets offered every single job in the NFL that's open right now. What's a better job? I guess the thing is there is that there are so many quarterbacks who are pretty good, who are available, that maybe going to Carolina doesn't look as bad because if you can get Rodgers or Carr or Jimmy G and have that be your guy, but – I agree that the Broncos the, the, are the, 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 only the highest win total. The, Cardinal, the Cardinals, yeah. you know, with Kyler. Could you go fix Kyler? That'd be one. I could see you arguing yeah. that, but they don't have the they don't have the defense, and that's a tough division too. Yep. Speaking of that division, Chargers officially hire Kellen Moore 
as their offensive coordinator from Lawrence Jackson's Mike McCarthy-led Dallas Cowboys. And, uh, yeah, I think this is a, a home run relative to uh, Joe Lombardi, who seemed to have a 0% approval rating and uh, didn't go down in a blaze of glory against Jacksonville. Lawrence, what do you think of the Kellen Moore hire? I mean, it, you know, anything different is good. Again, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. You said slam dunk. I say it'll be better. It should be better. You know, um, the the numbers went down for Justin Herbert, but they were able to get into the playoffs this year. So that, like, you always substitute that. You see the numbers there. The touchdowns went way down in 2022 from 30 from 38 to 25 here. But they missed the playoffs. It was a different Chargers team always coming from behind. That's why you see Herbert went from quarterback two in fantasy to only the quarterback 15, but they were able to win a lot of tight yeah. games. Um, so, yeah, I mean, upgrade here. I, I think uh, Kellen Moore kind of got scapegoated like many offensive coordinators in the league. So it, it's going to be solid. But, I mean, I could see by June, July, we're going to be talking about Justin Herbert as a potential MVP candidate. I won't be talking about that, but it will be well, getting talked about. Well, because you won't have a show. You'll be, <laughs> I mean, you'll be talking to it, but it'll be your house to your kids. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a Mike be, yeah. Um, so, I actually agree with Lawrence on this part, which, I mean, I think Joe Lombardi was scapegoated. I think Kellen Moore was scapegoated. I think both guys – or yeah. scapegoat. I think the argument, the anti Joe Lombardi arguments are all arguments you can make against Brandon Staley. The fact is, is that, right. or even Justin Herbert, who had, you know, how much of Justin Herbert's regression this year was due to poor play calling by Joe Lombardi, and how much it was due to the fact that their offensive line got beat up. He didn't have Keenan Allen for a long time, and then when he finally got Keenan Allen uh, back, Mike Williams goes down. Right? He he, you know, didn't have all those all those guys. Um, you know, he didn't have a full complement of um, of offensive weapons here, it sounds insane to say this, but you know they lose Jalen Guyton in the preseason, and you're like Jalen Guyton, who cares? And the fact is, though, but Jalen Guyton was like our, their deep threat, and they could use him to stretch defenses. And even though Jalen Guyton only probably ran like five or six go routes a game, like that was enough to open things up, and they didn't really have a true deep threat on that team. I mean, you know, a little bit of Josh Slater Palmer, as well. Like, yeah. Sean Slater, their best offensive line right. and goes down for the year effectively. Just I don't you know, I, I don't know. It just felt like just felt like Joe Lombardi I think got um scapegoated a little bit. I do think Kellen Moore, uh I I thought that was a moronic move by the Dallas Cowboys as a Commanders fan. I was reaction. thrilled by it. I was thrilled by it. I love the fact that Mike McCarthy is going to coach plays. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, we'll have all preseason to talk about this and everything like that. But like, if you look at Mike McCarthy's, if you look at Mike McCarthy's numbers prior to getting Aaron Rodgers, I mean, you know, like even in the two years, his last two years in Green Bay. Mike McCarthy was like bottom 12 in the NFL in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of points scored and everything like that. I, I think it's very telling that as soon as Mike McCarthy left, Aaron Rodgers won back-to-back -back MVPs. Right. We, uh, we was, people were starting to think that Aaron Rodgers was washed. Right. Like, after th like he would throw for 26 touchdowns and two interceptions, which is good, by the way. They're like, nah, he's done. Meanwhile, yeah. Kellen Moore, for the Cowboys, top six in points scored three of the four seasons he called the plays, led the league in yards two of his four seasons, top eight in passing yards in three or four years, top ten in rushing yards in three or four years. I don't know why he doesn't get any credit for developing, uh, developing Tony Pollard. You know, obviously that happened under his watch. Uh -huh. Dalton Schultz became a thing under his watch Michael Gallup his development happened under his watch CeeDee Lamb moving from uh, a complimentary receiver to Amari Cooper to a number one that he was this year under his watch I, I don't know listen I'm a commanders fan I can't stand the Cowboys I think <laughs> Kellen Moore is pretty good I think this is a home run hire for the Los Angeles Chargers and a dumb move by the Cowboys and as a commanders fan I'm thrilled about it okay well I think another home run move is uh, the Houston Texans hiring 49ers defensive coordinator, D'Amico Ryans is their head coach. Six-year deal, which is good because he might need six years, yeah. Matthew. To well, he needed it because well, he get more two, than one. Yeah, exactly. The last, two one. Co <laughs> last two coaches only got one. Yeah. They're like, hey, we'd like to hire you. Is it a one-year deal? Nah. <laughs> well, no, it's a, it's a one with an option. <laughs> I'm going to need more than that. But, uh, four? I, I'm going to need more than that. I don't trust right, you guys. Right, right. So if you get, me after, get rid of me after one year, at least you got to pay me out for five more. So yeah. good for uh, D'Amico Ryans, who is, by all accounts, like um, uh, an unbelievably uh, great 
guy, great in the locker room. Obviously, the numbers speak for himself in terms of the defense that he had with San Francisco, but, uh, you know, talking to people that know him around the league, just like, this is a guy that you knew was going to be a head coach one day. Like, right. just the way he carries himself, his organization, his, the way he sees the game. So, uh, this is a really good move for the Houston Texans. Yep, and he was the, the hottest candidate outside of Sean Payton. He was going to have his pick yeah. for pretty much any job. Well, uh, and, and by the way, I loved this. I love, did you see that, you know, there was like uh, dueling, uh, you know, dueling uh, reports because, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, you know, Schefter, oh, yeah, Schefter, yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Schefter was like, <laughs> the Broncos were all in on Sean Payton. They never wavered. Whereas uh, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network was like, oh, no, no, they were, they were trying to get Ryan's. They went, and, they, get and, Ryan's. And, and, and they, and Sean Payton was their second choice. They, they tried very hard to get Ryan. So, uh, we'll see how uh, that plays out. So a, very different reports. A-plus subtweeting there. Let's uh, talk yes. about the Chicago Bears. Uh, reports coming out that they are trying to trade the number one overall pick. Shock horror of uh, the yeah. 2023 NFL draft. We take a look at the betting odds now for who will be taken first overall. Bryce Young has been the favorite for a while now. He's minus 120. CJ Stroud plus 250. Uh, and both of those, you would expect, would be predicated on the Bears trading that pick. And then you've got Jalen Carter, five to one. Will Anderson, five to one. Will Levis and Miles Murphy bring up the. I wonder. Room. It's really interesting on Bryce Young, just because I wonder if, um, as we as we go through the combine, do you remember with Kyler Murray? You know, there was a lot of like hand size talk and how tall is he really? Like Bryce Young's yeah. not a big guy. Like I've taken, I've met Bryce Young and I've taken a picture next to him, and I'm taller than Bryce Young. No. I'm Ooh. I'm taller and thicker than Bryce Young. I felt like you know. I swear, like again, and I'm a fat dude, but like, um, <laughs> you're not. I'm just, you're not. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, whatever. I'm like, I'm six foot. I'm, I'm six foot, and that's what they list him. Well, I five eleven, six foot. They I, list him. I show you guys a pic. I have a picture somewhere of, that we took together. Over Bryce I'm not towering <laughs> over him, but he's not like. I mean, at, at best, we're the same same height. Yeah. He might be slightly yeah. shorter than me, and I'm just I. And so my point is, there's no question about the kid's talent. Like, he was unbelievable at Alabama. I'm just wondering if, you know, you saw this with Kyler Murray. You've seen this over the years with a couple of different quarterbacks. Kenny Pickett in the hand size and the whole thing. And Kyler Murray in terms of his height. Russell Wilson got knocked down to the third round because of his height. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just wonder if – it's interesting that he's the betting favorite right now because I could see once we get to the combine, you start getting some measurements that there could be some – you know, negative talk. What I would say to that is that Kyle Murray ended up going number one, despite all of that. I think yeah. that's, I think that And has young, proven himself. Yes. And has proven himself yeah. as a franchise quarterback yeah. in the lot, NFL. Lot of, lot Obviously, same is, as Russell Wilson. You know, a lot of entertainment. We, we got a long offseason ahead of Remember, right. you know, Devontae Smith used to be too skinny. Right. He ain't too skinny no more, even sure. though he probably gained two pounds since then. Uh, you know, but that being said, Bryce Young being the betting favorite, um, could have had something to do with why D'Amico run. Everybody like, why would you want to go coach the Texans? Well, you get your quarterback, you get a fresh start. This where you used to play. Like you really get to start from the ground up. So, and if you if Bryce Young is there, you know why not? Yep, I'm with you there. And I would be shocked if the Bears didn't trade the pick just because they have their quarterback and there are yeah, so yeah. many teams that need. I a mean, I've what? seen some people suggest that the Bears should get rid of Justin Fields and, dra and, your, and trade Justin Fields, which is the most insane thing in the world. It's Maybe if it was <laughs> Andrew Luck in the draft or Peyton Manning or something, it's like it's not. These yeah, guys right, aren't projected right, right, to be clearly, right. clearly better he, than he, Justin Fields. Justin Fields probably would be the top quarterback prospect in this draft and that's right. why we're you know but as soon as the Texans lost that week 18 game folks just went oh uh oh they they yeah. the Bears gonna trade him like did you not see this kid just try to do for him what they did for Trevor Lawrence and in that division now with Aaron Rodgers possibly gone like you could be seeing the Bears as that next team in the playoffs yeah I mean I I there was a there was a learning curve for Justin Fields but once it clicked on you were yeah. like oh man I, you know, yeah. I mean, like, he's obviously going to be a top pick in fantasy, but Justin, we, how many times this year did we say that Justin Fields can play? Yep. The kid can flat out play football anyway. But, you know, the Bryce Young, the hot takes, everything like that, those are the kind of things you'll see yes. from Lawrence's, uh, <laughs> Lawrence's, <laughs> Lawrence's couch. I will f I'm going uh, to find couch. my way always on this show. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Hey, uh, we'll see. I'm looking forward to the debut episode of Lawrence's Couch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. 
Jimmy Garoppolo uh, might be on the couch for a little while while he looks for a new team. 49ers coach Carl Shanahan said he doesn't see any scenario in which Jimmy G returns to the team in 2023. And here is Carl Shanahan talking about Trey Lance and Brock Purdy. Are you um, content enough with, with Brock and, and, and Lance being the, you know, the top two guys going into training camp or would you be looking for a high profile veteran? No, we're content enough. I know we have two starters on our team right now that I believe we can win with. Um, so when you have that situation, you're not that eager to go looking around. The good thing about Brock is that wasn't an issue. It was a freak accident that I think everyone saw what happened. And when you talk to the doctors, it takes three months to really get back to repairing it and building it up the right way. And in six months, he'll be the same guy. All right, here we go. If you look at Jimmy G, stats side by side with Brock Purdy. 7-3 for Jimmy, 7-0 and for Brock Purdy. And uh, yeah, it makes me think that maybe I don't want to give Jimmy G a huge contract in the offseason if Mr. Irrelevant could do that in the San Francisco offense. But Lawrence, who's going to start week one for the Niners? Man, I feel like this injury just opened the door a little bit and it's going to end up being Trey Lance. A couple shows back, you said, Matthew, if Brock Purdy gets this team to the Super Bowl, you don't have to win it. But if they get him to the Super Bowl and it's because of him, then there will be no question. And I definitely agree with that. But now, because of the injury, and uh, Trey Lance may be a little ahead, he may be a little ahead in his recovery, it just opened the door. Um, that's not that. something I'm just planting a, a, a flag. Like, it's just my gut feeling for today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We will tune into future episodes of, of you on your couch to f- see hey, where you thing, land. Hey, that thing going to blow up. On the flags, that, that, that show going to blow up. Yeah, exactly. I can't wait. We'll you know. be rivals. hundred <laughs> percent. It'd be exciting. It'd be like, you know, you'll have different fabric on the couch each week. I can see, Look, I can already see like what plant will Lawrence have today I, I, next I, to him on the couch. I'm going to get Tom Brady on my show. He won't be on this <laughs> that's one. That's fine. That's fair. All that is, uh, all that's very fair. I would, uh, I think Lawrence might be right on this one. I, I think that – I do think that Brock Purdy starts games for the Niners next year. But I feel like, first off, draft capital in terms of what they've invested in Trey Lance. Um, and felt like this last year, right? I mean, we could have we had this exact same discussion a year ago, Trey Lance versus Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. Jimmy Garoppolo led them to the playoffs. Jimmy Garoppolo has been solid for them, Good everything point. like that. And yet – they were like, no, no, we're all in on Trey Lance. Yeah. Despite the fact that, you know, he'd played whatever it was, you know, like three games, you know, in the past two and a half years. They were all in on uh, Trey Lance. And and I feel like that's going to be the same thing. That I just, I feel like draft capital and that they just, they made such a big bet on Trey Lance. They'll say all the right things and it'll be a battle and it'll be a camp battle and everything yeah. like that. The one weird thing about it is, is that... An offense with Trey Lance as your quarterback is very different than the Brock Purdy offense. I mean, the yeah. Brock Purdy offense is the Garoppolo offense. Like, it's a, he's a drop-back passer, you know what I mean? It's a, like a lot of quick screens and that kind of stuff. Whereas with Trey Lance, you want to get him on the move and, and take advantage of his mobility. And so it just feels weird. But it just feels like they've been so successful with kind of this, you know, yeah. stand-of-the-pocket, yeah. solid, middle-of-the-road guy. Yeah, just the guy. Quarterback. Yeah. I, I, but I agree. I just think the upside of Trey Lance, they've invested so much in it. It'll be his job to lose. Yep. I think we're going to see Trey Lance as the starter, but with a short leash as Brock Purdy heals. All right, we're going to break. When we come back, it's Groundhog Day on the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. We'll talk about what will repeat next year. I can tell you one that won't. Lawrence. (laughs) I like the fact that you are celebrating both the Chiefs and Eagles going to the Super Bowl by wearing... A New York Liberty sweatshirt. <laughs> the big winners yesterday. In New York. Yeah, we're wearing. We got green. We got red. You know what? Whatever. Lawrence. Lawrence. Lawrence changes it up. You basically either wear a New York Liberty thing uh, oh, or, or jets. Like, you're like the guy in Coming to America, where you were like, you, you moved here from Australia, and you went to like the first like tacky store you could find, and you're like, what do you have? I I New York sports fan, and that you just you like give me five of those Liberty things and give me uh, give me give me a couple of Jets uh, shirts. Okay, I'm good. I've got my wardrobe for the season. Oh, we 
we've got Brianna Stewart now on the New York uh, Liberty uh, Matthew Berry. Just the best yeah, yeah. women's basketball player yeah, in the world. Yeah, you're not, you're not repping. Like, I was going to wear it, but my uh, eight-month-old daughter vomited all over it. So uh, <laughs> it was best for uh, America. Yeah, it was job, a real kind job, of yeah, Arden work. Key falling on Patrick Mahomes' leg type scenario. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to see that Liberty hoodie again. But it is Groundhog Day, 30th yes. anniversary. One of the great films of uh, the 1980s. Don't so drive we're... angry. Don't drive angry. Don't drive angry. <laughs> Don't drive angry. So we're going to talk about... Would you about... like to ruin the ending of that one? It's been 30 years. <laughs> no, I won't. Okay. Yeah, I won't. There you go. I'm, feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling generous today. Yeah. So we're going to talk about what we're going to be seeing deja vu with next year. So let's start off with that. Because guy. it's Groundhog Day. Just yeah. the, the <laughs> idea of Groundhog it. Day things happen again and again, like again in the movie. <laughs> and so the premise here to fill time is, can, what, what, what do we think happened this year in fantasy football? Can it potentially repeat? Yeah. So just so just, in case anyone didn't understand the premise. We'll just keep repeating. So Brianna Stewart signed with the right, New York yeah, Liberty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. And Lawrence's Lawrence's Couch is a new show debuting on. Um, couch is clean. Uh, of. Yeah. On NBC Sports. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. NBC and YouTube. Let's uh, let's start NBC with you, Matthew. Will YouTube Justin channel. Fields go nuclear again? What's he going to be? Is he going to be like QB three, QB four next year? He will. I look. I, they're going to get him some weapons this off season as well. Even just having Chase Claypool there for a full season. You know, another year of Cole Komet having Darnell Mooney healthy and I think they will add to the receiving core their fields just you know seven different games with 80 or more rushing yards and I think when you watch the when you watch those games you're like that kid's special 100% he repeats as a top five fantasy quarterback no okay question. Lawrence will Daniel Jones or Geno Smith repeat their top 10 finishes next year I'm, I'm gonna say a yes for Geno Smith and no for Daniel Jones, Geno Smith will still have Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. They need to upgrade their defense. Daniel Jones, on the other hand, we don't know what they, we know they need receivers, but we don't know if and how they're going to get them. He's only thrown for 300 yards against either the Vikings or the Texans. His next best game is 225. I'll say Geno over Daniel Jones. Okay, a name that wasn't on that list of the top 10 quarterbacks was Russell Wilson. Is he going to finish outside the top 12 again, Matthew, with Sean Payton? I don't coach? believe he will. Okay. I don't believe he will. I mean, look, he only three games with two or more touchdown passes. Look, Sean Payton's two things. I, I think Sean Payton's a good coach. I think he's obviously a very good offensive coach. But more importantly here, like, Sean Payton is somebody who likes the numbers. Like, you think about the year that, uh, that Drew Brees was chasing the record for yeah. most passing yards. Like, they were like, yeah, oh, oh yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's second one, you're throwing. <laughs> I mean, fourth down, we're going for it. I mean, throw, throw, throw. Hey, we're up 40 points in the fourth quarter. I don't care. Drew, get on out there yeah. and keep chucking. So, uh, if nothing else, Sean Payton knows that he's – look, they're tied to Russell Wilson the way apparently I'm tied to Lawrence. <laughs> they're, they're tied – to Russell Wilson, they can't get out of that deal. So they've nope. got to, they've got to make Russell Wilson work. And I think, if nothing else, a superficial way to make it work is to get him big numbers and stats. Yep. Sean Payton will make sure that Russell Wilson has a good year statistically. They got you the know, receivers they, to they, do it, and they got the receivers to do it. They'll have it'll be a good scheme. Yes, hundred percent. It does not repeat. Okay, Lawrence is Josh Jacobs going to repeat his top five finish? If we're feeling like he's going to still be a Raider, I would say, I'll say yeah. You know, it, we got to see who the quarterback is. If it's Aaron Rodgers, like Devontae Adams, want I'll definitely say yes. Outside of that, I'm going to say no. Top five, being a repeat top five guy is hard to do unless you're like Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler. Yeah, I'm going to say no just because he's a running back and there's so yep. much volatility uh, and attrition at the position. Speaking of running backs, Matthew, can Tony Pollard and Ramondre Steven season repeat their top 10 seasons? Tony Pollard, I'm going to say no. Uh, ultimately, this is Mike McCarthy. Like they, again, Pollard's a free agent. Zeke is a free agent. So it all depends. But assuming we're – I'm going to take it, the NFL as it is today, which is that Pollard and Zeke are both on the Cowboys. Yeah. Obviously, the, if, if Zeke leaves, then yes on Pollard. Right. But assuming both guys are back with the Cowboys, I'm going to say no because of Mike McCarthy and because of Jerry Jones. Like, Jerry Jones loves Zeke, and they're going to yeah. want to use him quite a bit, even in a, on a restructured contract. And – you know, one of the things I'm known for is a whole thing that I did back on my ESPN days was the whole free Aaron Jones, hashtag free Aaron Jones. Like, I, I started that, and that became your rallying cry. And it all started because of Mike McCarthy, who refused to free Aaron Jones. We were like, this guy is the best running back on your right. team, and it's Same not close. Scenario. Why will you not use him? 
it will be a committee in Dallas, and so I am nervous. And I also think the offense won't be nearly as good under McCarthy as it was under Kellen Moore. So I'll say no on Pollard, but I will say yes on Stevenson just because I think he's a very talented player. They're not going to have much there. It, it, the, the Patriots will have a better offense under Bill O'Brien this coming year, I believe. And so, and Bill O'Brien is, you know, speaking of Arian Foster, Bill O'Brien has traditionally used one running back. I think Ramondre Stevenson is the best guy on that team. Yep. I didn't know you were known for uh, free Aaron Jones. I thought you were just known for your uh, Austrian accent I'm and known uh, your for love a lot of chicken things. fingers. I'm known for a lot of things, uh, candidly. You know, <laughs> listen, when you're as old as I am, there's you've built up quite a life resume. So, uh, yeah, that's that's you, one of the you things gonna I'm be known. known you're going to be known as the guy with a show on the couch soon. <laughs> Me? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> wow. No, no, no. I don't think you understand. I don't think you hey, understand. Hey, remember, remember Tom Brady, Drew Bledsoe? Dude. You remember I that? Think, I don't think you, you understand. Listen, come I, on. I, I joke about this, but, like, NB, you don't understand how terrible a contract NBC signed with me. <laughs> They're like much like the Broncos with Russell Wilson actually is NBC to me. NBC touché, has to make touché, me worse. Touché. Like they yeah, it's you have no idea. Yeah, no, there's been the three listen, there's been like three different executives that have already been fired because of my contract. You have no idea. Speaking of disappointments, yeah. Lawrence, Jonathan Taylor, is there gonna be another disappointment yeah. for uh, JT? I'm gonna say no, man. The talent's just too good. I Agreed. will say this. I like to see one of them. I, I would like to see the Colts get one of these quarterbacks, either Bryce Young or CJ Strauss. So they, the offense just needs to go. It needs to move. It'll be able to do that with one of these top rookie quarterbacks. So I'm gonna say no. He's not gonna have another disappointing season. So I, I'll go with that there on JT. Okay. I'm gonna ask just the next question to myself. Will Jamal Williams lead the NFL in rushing touchdowns again? No. Next question. Another, <laughs> is there going to be another wide receiver one season, Matthew, for Cooper Cup coming off the injury? I'm going to say no just because, you know, whether it's Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson, there's just too many other candidates coming off of a serious injury. We just don't – I'm nervous about Stafford in the lower back. Cooper Cup's still going to be one of the top five wide receivers drafted this year, and he should be. But yeah. if you're telling me does he absolutely finish number one overall, I don't because you sit there and you look at it. You could easily see Diggs finish there. You could see Tyreek in his second year McDaniel system finish there. Devontae Adams, I mean, you know, like he's all they got. So, um, he was you know, six. I, I Devontae mean, Adams right, was six. I mean, that's what's crazy. Is so, um, you know, how about my guy Amon Ra, too? Yeah. He, By the way, that, that could be the dark horse yeah. wide receiver one overall. Yeah. yeah. I like so, that. All right. Two so, contenders, four wide receiver one Lawrence, Tyreek Hill. I mean, I Hill. love my little Cooper Cup, but, you know. I know you do. Uh, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, are they going to repeat as top 12 wide receivers? <sighs> Man, that, that one is tough. I'm, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> Tyree Hill had his best season. Jalen Waddle had his best season to date. They both won't have to repeat this exact season to both be top two receivers. The passing vibes is going to be just too much, although they do need to upgrade their running back room. Yep. All right, Matthew, any chance that Travis Kelsey doesn't dominate the tight end position again? Any chance that someone could usurp him or at least make it close? I, I guess, to me, the only way is is that the Chiefs win the Super Bowl and he retires. <laughs> I, 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 TJ Hawkinson, full year with uh, Kirk I mean, Cousins? Yeah, I mean, listen, Hawkinson's there. Like, you know, we expect, assuming Lamar Jackson is back, paid, and healthy and happy with the Ravens, Mark Andrews is in the mix. But I just, Kelsey is too good. Mahomes is too good. Andy Reid is too good. Uh, he's going to be the number one uh, tight end drafted, and I think he should be. Okay. Speaking of tight ends, Lawrence, Kyle Pitts, uh, oh. a bit of a taboo name <laughs> on this show. Is he going to score under three yeah. touchdowns again? No, because Lamar Jackson is going to be his quarterback. <laughs> okay. nah, it's just, yeah, he'll, he'll get more. You know that's not happening. Right? I know it's not happening. <laughs> but you need uh, to start it, talking it, yourself it, into it, Desmond Ritter it, now. It, it, be you need to start talking yourself into Desmond uh, hey, Ritter Kyle now. Hey, Kyle Pitts for at least four touchdowns in 2023. All right. Wow. Matthew, Tom Brady. Is he yeah. going to be playing football in the NFL next year again? Boy, <laughs> no, I don't think he can do it. I don't yeah, think he nah. pulls a Favre. Favre retired and unretired like a bunch of different yeah. times. I think I think Brady thought this through because may I, I have no yeah I don't think he plays in the NFL. Feels but like I Jordan. Never, Feels what? like Jordan. Jordan came back once. Well, yeah. no, actually, Jordan came back a couple times. <laughs> yeah. 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 Think about the Wizards. I mean, yeah. I will just say that you could see a thing where I mean, there's a couple scenarios where like where you know if like <laughs> San like, Francisco, yeah, Brock Brady and Trey Lance go down. Yeah. 
Yeah, what, maybe. If, what if Belichick calls him? What if Robert Kraft and Belichick call him and say, hey. I'd back 30 to 1 that Tom Brady takes a snap in the NFL. Can't NFL play with our emotions yeah. like this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're going to break. When <laughs> we come I, back, if, best if bets in the Super Bowl. If I have to predict, I'm going to say no, which means it'll be wrong. And he, he won't play a snap next year. All right. Next week, gentlemen, we'll be at... The Super Bowl in Arizona, live from Radio Row, will be 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern, as always. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Be Here's the whole Phoenix. schedule. Starting off with the Dan Patrick Show. PFT Live is after us. And then, of course, Brother from Another. I wonder if we'll get to meet Dan. I think we will. I think we will. I think that's uh, much more likely than Tom Brady uh, coming back <laughs> into the NFL. I'd <laughs> right. back minus 300 we meet Dan. Super Bowl line yep. opened. Chiefs minus two and a half. Flipped to Eagles minus two and a half. Now it's Eagles minus one and a half. I still think the Chiefs should be favored. I think they're the best bet, man. Give me, uh, uh, you still think the Chiefs? Right? I think the Chiefs should, I think they'll win. I, and I think I, they should be favored. I do too. And so I, I took the Chiefs plus one and a half. Yeah, give me that. So I, I like the Chiefs money line. I like the Chiefs with the points Scott as well. Scott likes the Eagles. Give me the opposite of all that <laughs> Eagles money line. Let's go. Lawrence has had a great career on fantasy football. Happy yes, hour. Yes, Thank yes. you, Lawrence. For Jay Croucher, I'm Matthew Berry. We'll see you in Arizona. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.